Hello, this is Colin Liddell and this is The Short Pod, a brief and succinct podcast commenting on the events and issues of the day. And today it is the 10th of September 2020. Back in 1938, this happened. Cup final enthusiasm prevails in Berlin when England meet Germany on the soccer field. All the courtesies are observed before the start. God Save the King is played. And the English team in white shirts give the Nazi salute during the German national anthem. Flash forward to 2020, and uh, we now have something quite similar happening. England football players all forced to make the same political gesture. But in this case, it's not Sieg Heilen, the Führer of a rise in Nazi Germany, but instead taken a knee for a extremist, racist, anti-white group that uh, literally wants to cause anarchy and chaos and release criminals onto the streets. Here's uh, England captain Harry Kane explaining the rationale behind this momentous Can decision. Can you tell me a bit more about that, how those discussions went, who led them and, 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 and how, how strongly people felt about it? Yeah, it was more of a kind of a general general discussion, really. Um, I think it was important as a as, as a team, as a, as a nation, as uh, the staff, everyone involved uh, wanted to be on the same page, and, and we thought it was important to continue taking the knee be, be, before the game. So, um, yeah, it wasn't a, a, a massive meeting or, or anything like that. It was just uh, a pretty quick discussion, to be honest, that everyone was on board and everyone wanted to do it. Um, and, and we all think it's important to continue that message for, for obviously country uh, whenever we play and, and uh, club games as well. Both in 1938 and in 2020, the emphasis is on teamwork, on everybody working together. The worst possible thing is that people might have individual political beliefs or a complete absence of them and uh, end up doing things differently. So no, you've all got to Sieg Heil, or you've all got to take the knee. I mean, I find it very, very hard to believe that uh, all the England players, even the black ones, support the policies of Black Lives Matter. A recent article by the Daily Mail did a deep dive on Black Lives Matter UK and uh, dug up some of the following policies. To quote, on the group's GoFundMe page, a statement outlining the Black Lives Matter UK policy agenda was uploaded a few days ago. It explains that the organisation intends to be guided by a commitment to dismantle imperialism, capitalism, white supremacy, patriarchy and the state structures that disproportionately harm black people in Britain and around the world. This is extremely problematic because such structures clearly don't exist in a affirmative action pro-black Britain. Getting even more specific, the article also mentions another policy of Black Lives Matter UK. Elsewhere on its GoFundMe page, Black Lives Matter UK declares that it wishes to spend cash it has raised on developing and delivering what it calls strategies for the abolition of the police. And uh, there is more to quote from the article again. On Twitter, where it has been active since mid-2016, BLM UK has endorsed the complete closure of all Britain's prisons and detention centres, saying in December of that year that they were inhumane, overcrowded and unsafe and should be abolished. So, to sum up, this is clearly an insane group of people pushing policies and ideas that uh, the vast majority of the British people deeply disagree with. Abolishing the police, abolishing prisons, overthrowing capitalism. These are all extreme communist anarchist uh, ideas. So when the English football team takes a knee, like it did in the recent games against Iceland and Denmark, this is literally what it is supporting. 
Is it really that different from 1938?